What's up, people? Well, it's a nice day out, and it's a perfect time for me to do a uh, my home comm center uh, upgrade or whatever. It's going to be a change. And the change that we got is I'm going to replace the Jim Slim antenna with uh, a chicken. No. <laughs> <laughs> with with this uh, this cone antenna, the same antenna that I had before, the uh, Diamond D130J, but we're not going to install this yet. We're going to do some stuff with this a little bit later. But but there's some stuff I want to do to this before I install it up there. But for now, we're going to take down the uh, old Jim Slim antenna that's up there, and it's been up there since 2012 so we're going on four years that's in my that's in my backyard so here it is in the backyard there's my discone antenna right up there on top and my Jim Slim antenna right here in the mid mast so that looks like about 15 feet almost 20 and it's been up there for four years and I do get some weather some change of uh, seasons like snow and rain of course and uh, freezing weather so it's been up there for four years in the elements just like that I did take a little bit of precaution some weather proof and precaution so we're going to tear that down and see uh, what sort of damage we have from uh, summer heat and sun beating on it and the winter cold that we get here in the backyard once in a while including snow and all that so let's see what's going on with this here but of course me showing you it all nice and properly installed on the tower is not going to really tell you much uh, usually all these equipment out in the field is not going to show whether it works or not obviously so uh, we're going to break out the equipment here a service monitor and actually measure the return loss of that particular antenna and return loss it just gives you the health of the antenna and for uh, as a rule of thumb a 10 DB return loss on a on a bridge here on any antenna will indicate that it's that's the threshold of it either sucking or not after four years uh, installed in the backyard for VHF I get the center frequency of 148 megahertz and the return loss of that is minus 21 dBm's which is pretty kick-ass it's it's all right uh, actually let's take away 3 dBm's because of line loss and we're looking at maybe 18 dB dBm's of return loss considering but it's in tuned and the bandwidth on the VHF side will tuned uh, okay between 143 megahertz up to 152 megahertz which is right dab smack in the middle of the hand band and the center frequency there the the very tip there the most efficient point of the antenna is 148 megahertz at minus 21 dBm's in English it's tuned to the hand bands on the VHF uh, side of the house okay you should be able to do really good with this antenna in that frequency span now of course the Jim Slim is a dual band antenna so we have a UHF component to the antenna which is indicated by this dip right here so the bandwidth is from 435 megahertz to 469 megahertz so that's a pretty good little spread of frequencies and uh, the center frequency is actually 443 megahertz that is pretty much an average of the two Jim Slim antenna that I have uh, that they tune to and it looks like it's still keeping its resonant frequency on the UHF ham band which is pretty kick-ass for a ham radio antenna uh, something really delicate out there I would think as far as construction being in the elements for four years in the backyard uh, it survived four years worth of weather well after four years here's the first layer of electrical tape I believe this is scotch 33 scotch number 33 electrical tape which is used for and you know outside applications 
and it's still not brittle or nothing like that it's even have some adhesive properties to it still so uh, we'll see how this thing unravels see if there's any moisture damage or anything like that just for shits and giggles since we're up here I don't think anybody has given like a five-year you know after action report or whatever so this is going to be sort of a four-year after action report on a home uh, antenna mast installation or monopole such as such as this here so let's see what happens okay I'm gonna unravel some more here so the first layer is electrical tape scotch 33 so here we go look at that still looks nice and shiny as day number one and uh, this is a UHF adapter and that looks really clean in there the copper or gold plated coating or whatever that is is still sort of shiny here's my PL259 adapter male to male adapter barrel that's doing okay and I believe I have a UH in, in channel here and the inside of that is nice and shiny still like day number one usually if there was any sort of uh, contamination from the elements all, all this will just turn colors uh, tarnish or whatever and green stuff will start growing on it which is not good but one layer of electrical tape second layer of that rubber self-adhesive uh, tape around that then the third layer of uh, electrical tape seem to do the trick at least for four years here now on the other end of the connector this is the uh, intact the, the uh, gym slim antenna that's still looking really good and shiny as day number one okay I think my job is done out here I'm just gonna wrap this up for later use when I put the uh, disc cone antenna in its place and I'm just gonna cover this up uh, protect it from the elements and uh, continue on my thing here so I basically took down the antenna which was uh, this cable here feeding into my command garage here uh, I had no problems with it it was doing really good but I sort of want to expand my capabilities a little bit more than just dual band amateur radio frequency range type of stuff I don't have a lot of real estate up on that pole I got way up there in my backyard. I uh, only have two antennas, one of them being the disc cone antenna, which uh, I got hooked up to my scanner at all times, and I just listen to everything in my area. Real useful and practical, and uh, I think it should be the first sort of type of comm equipment everybody should get out there just for general preparedness uh, reasons. I like this setup so much, the uh, disc cone wideband antenna so much that I think I want to replace it where this used to be, uh, mid midway on the pole there on top of my uh, property there, uh, so I could get you know more capabilities. Cause, because even though they advertise it being a monitor antenna or receive antenna only, it actually does okay transmitting, at least on the bands that I usually use all the time. So. Uh, it does scope out really well as far as uh, impedance and and uh, how it presents itself to the transmitter and uh, I think I'm gonna go with a second one here but it's gonna be with a little twist and, and that's an overall project here for the garage command center as you can see I've done a quite a bit of cleanup uh, minimalizing a whole lot of shit and uh, just getting rid of useless stuff that I don't use much at all and keeping what works so even though uh, yes I did take it down the slim gen antenna it works very well but I'm gonna put something on there with a bit more capabilities that this cone there packaged up and this will probably go in some sort of kit or whatever some go kit or then at the very end here this part of it ex is exposed and it's copper and solder right there on a the tip and yeah, the uh, solder shows some um, tarnish from being in the weather, and so does the copper. The copper is discolored, but still very intact. I could take a wire brush to that, and it'll shine right up. But that is also uh, a, what do you call it, a uh, weakness there is, is, you know, that water will eventually seep through 
uh, this channel here corroding from the inside out. But in my elevation and weather, and dry weather out here, it's really not a concern. Uh, this would be a big deal if it was uh, on the coast. You know, that sea, the sea salt air uh, does a, a real number on electronics. The dual band Slim Jim N9 Tax antenna has survived four years out in the elements. And I have used this once in a while, transmit a few times, but mostly I do uh, listening on the dual band uh, amateur radio that sometimes I put in here. And uh, I was able to get really good reception and transmission. I got good reports from everyone, you know, nothing, nothing out of the ordinary, nothing spectacular, but it, it did the job for four years out in the elements. And you know, the condition that it's in right now, I don't. I really don't have to do nothing to it. I'll just roll it up and put it in a uh, a field kit or something, and I have me an extra antenna to use out in the field if I wanted to. It has served me very well, and there's not much opportunity for people out there to show you know gear and after action report like after X amount of years, like four in my case here, but. It's it's a true testament on, on, you know, how this stuff is holding up, not just, a, you know, run-of-the-mill review, tabletop, you know, you just got it off the wrapper from the vendor, and you're saying, oh, this thing is uh, great. Nah, you've seen this thing go through its paces after four years, and it has stood the test of time, which is what we, you know, really need to see out here for the real thing. Uh, in my elevation here in the mountains, uh, and dry, sort of dry weather, uh, good water as far as rain and stuff, and, and moisture contact, this survived pretty well four years in the elements. But on the coast, it would degrade really rapidly, I would imagine, and, and possibly mistuned, possibly. I don't know, I don't live on the coast. But out here, you've seen the, you've seen the proof uh, the proof is in the pudding, which I just showed you, and uh, we're doing okay here. So with that, there's your four-year update on the Slim Jim antenna, and uh, it's a kick-ass antenna, despite all the naysayers out there.